hello and good afternoon so welcome to the unfiltered chat once again by brainium information technology okay so uh today we have uh, insure tech industry we'll be talking about insure tech industry so the insure tech industry in india is thriving and uh, since the last two years it has uh, seen almost two times of funding growth and uh, today talking us through the insure tech industry and the prospects of the insure tech industry and a must have entrepreneurship qualities we have the ceo and executive director of cover fox and cover stack mr sanjeev cha hi can you see me hear me yes yes i can see you and good afternoon mr cha how are you i am doing very good is this background okay um it's fine it will be nice if you can just close the curtain because actually the light is coming in and it's making a dark appearance uh thank you so thank you so much mr ja thank you so much you have to excuse so, uh, me for how how are you do okay okay yeah sure are they making chalo I think there's some connection issues. So yes, we, that was Mr. Sanjeev Jha. He he is the CEO and Executive Director of Cover Soft and Cover Stack. Cover Soft is basically uh, like we are dealing in the insurance technology industry, and uh, like they are basically like okay, yeah. Is it is it the connection is okay right now, Mr. Sir? Yeah, it's absolutely fine. Thank you. Sorry about this. No issues. Okay, so how are you doing? Uh, like you know, where where are you exactly right now? I am in Delhi. I have come for a few meetings here, okay. so, and we are doing absolutely fine. Thank you for uh, okay. hosting me. It's a pleasure actually meeting you. Okay, so uh, like. I was just uh, telling our viewers about about Cover Fox and Cover Stack. So it has been ten years about of Cover Fox. So first of all, we want to congratulate you. It has been ten years since the journey of Cover Fox started. How does it make it feel? Uh, it is actually phenomenal to be a part of a story which is ten years old now. And uh, while I have spent only four years out of this ten years in Cover Fox Group, but uh, the four year in itself has been encompassing the last 10 years uh, so uh, it's been a great ride and more to come definitely definitely so uh, it ha- must not have been an easy road i mean since a large section of people weren't uh, you know like much aware of online insurance uh, even in today in 2023 i know there is a big chunk of people who are not Back in 2013, it must have been more difficult. So, can you please tell us more about the challenges you faced during the initial years of this? Now, so you are absolutely right. Uh, uh, you know, uh, while the entire insurance industry is almost uh, on an annual basis, slightly uh, more than 100 billion dollars, uh, almost like 850,000 crores. Uh, that's the premium which is underwritten uh, each year by all the insurers in this country. Uh, and there are almost 500 in- intermediaries uh, which are trying to distribute the insurance products for the insurers uh, while the insurers themselves also distribute product but uh, even after the size of 100 billion dollar plus uh, with over 50 uh, with about 50 odd insurers and over 500 or 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 distributors which are brokers of course uh, leave aside the individual agents which are closer to about 3 million in number we are still uh, among the vastly unpenetrated uh, uh, insurance uh, economy in the entire world uh, 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 with the gdp ratio if you uh, cal- if you compare we are uh, about 6 plus percentage uh, penetration as far as the gdp is concerned which is abysmally low so digital transformation and digital distribution is an important uh, uh, learning uh, the critical thing that has been the last 10 years uh, uh, and of course policy bazaar existed slightly before uh, 
uh, Cover Fox started, uh, and they have grown large. And in addition to Policy Bazaar, there are uh, uh, Cover Fox. Uh, uh, there are quite a bunch of uh, uh, intermediaries which are using technology platforms to distribute insurance. And insurers themselves, the new age insurers like Echo, Digit, uh, they are vastly trying to distribute through digital uh, penetration. But uh, what is uh, important to understand is that the consumer behavior uh, in, 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 in this particular industry uh, is changing not at the pace that which we would actually want. The way lending industry consumer behavior changed. Uh, people can access loan on phone and they can repay through phone. Today, it is not so easy to access insurance through phone uh, unless and until uh, certain products which the regulator has uh, enabled end-to-end -end digitization. Um, uh, it is still a lot of human intervention is required. So while we have covered quite a decent um, uh, path in the last 10 years, um, I think of, of the total 100 billion that I was talking about, only 4% uh, of that is distributed digitally. Uh, so there's still a 96% which is open um, land, I would say, uh, where uh, distribution is still through human intervention. Uh, uh, so challenges are there, growth is happening, but uh, consumer behaviors are also changing. But uh, the speed at which it should happen uh, is not happening. Um, but I am seeing a, a, a transition in the last 24 months, uh, which is which is also a good news. I like you know can understand. I mean, ninety six percent is a very big number, like to be considered. And there's like a million lot of people who are you know still unknown about this. Uh, so, uh, like I I was uh, wondering about the business funding. Let's let's you know we can talk about the business funding actually. So uh, most startups actually try to get invest investors on board from day one uh, to raise seed money and. Uh, is it better for entrepreneurs to get funding in the early stage or be a bootstrap company? So I want to know your opinion on it. See, there's no right answer to this question, uh, Shreyasi. Uh, 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 there are companies which have actually been successful in raising money even uh, before revenue. Uh, then there are companies which have been able to significantly raise money. They have revenue, but there is significant losses. Uh, there are companies which are very stable, very strong revenue, bottom line, a very healthy business, have not been able to raise capital. Um, okay. uh, and it depends on entrepreneur to entrepreneur. I am of the view that uh, once the business is fundamentally strong, uh, uh, you don't need external capital. And uh, uh, first build the business for the consumer, then build the business for yourself, and then build the business for the investors. Uh, that is my golden rule, uh, which I've tried to follow. Uh, having said that, CoverFox has until now raised uh, roughly 450 odd crores uh, in capital um, uh, and a significant part of that capital has gone in uh, building a platform which uh, we are very proud of today. Uh, so yes, uh, entrepreneur to entrepreneur, business to business. Uh, uh, my straight answer is that first build the business for the consumer and then build the business for yourself and money will follow investment will follow okay uh so i have a comment uh from ujani ghosh she's asking again she's uh, asking something relevant to what we are talking about uh, so she's asking so for people who are opting to be bootstrapped what challenges they can expect see the biggest challenge is in your mind uh, that you should expect whether you're a bootstrapped or you're not bootstrapped uh, entrepreneurship is not a child's play. It's not a joke. Uh, uh, you go through uh, multiple mood swings through the day. Uh, you might have a very uh, bad morning because some of your client mm -hmm. may not have done business or not paid or things are not operating the way you would want. And then by afternoon, you hear a good news and you are like oh. uh, in, a, in a different zone. Get back all the energy. Yes. Yeah. The challenge is within the challenge is within self. You, you, you as an entrepreneur will have to believe in one key theory, which is today is not the last day. Uh, 
so whether you're a bootstrapped you may be heavily funded also uh, but still you may not find a product market fit and uh, you right. lose everything right uh, so you have to again go back to the same theory uh, same basis build a business for the consumer consumer likes if a good product you will start liking the business if you start liking the business then you will say today is not the last day there is another day and i will deal with that so whether right. you're bootstrapped or not the biggest challenge is you Wow, that's that's so like that is a very like important thing which Mr. Jha said. So uh, bootstrap or not, it's the challenge is in the mind actually, it's in your mentality. That's really nice. Um, so Mr. Jha, you mentioned right now about the InsureTech platform. Uh, we have recently launched CoverStack, the InsureTech platform which you mentioned right now. Uh, so please tell us more about it. See, the idea of CoverStack actually happened in one of our uh, uh, product engineering um, and uh, uh, marketing session that we were doing together uh, almost a year and a half ago. And uh, uh, what we said to ourselves was that, look, we are in a business where uh, we have to constantly acquire customers. We have to go ahead and, and acquire consumers who would come on your platform, buy a product, and uh, you would make revenue out of that. And maybe if you have spent less, you will earn profit on that transaction, or otherwise you will lose money. Majority of the insurance uh, uh, distributors who are using technology, uh, uh, majority of them are not profitable. Uh, large part of their business or a large part of their capital goes in acquiring customers, uh, which is... Okay which is which is lethal which is which is uh, dangerous which is uh, because every year it's like you are you're running on a treadmill and you're not reaching anywhere right so every year you mm -hmm. keep on acquiring customers after customers and then you are you have created a business which constantly requires money to acquire customers right so the idea that came to us was we have a platform which is a functional platform we are india's largest insurance integrated platform uh, we are bigger than uh, yeah. policy bazaar for that matter uh, <clears throat> our goal is to make a platform where <clears throat> any insurance requirement of yours uh, whether you are mm -hmm. taking a cab from your home to the airport and you have a fear of missing the flight so you want to cover the uh, uh, insurance in have insurance for your flight uh, uh, cancellation or flight missing uh, you have a cattle, you want to insure your cattle, um, you want to mm -hmm. do fire insurance, you want to do health, life, motor, anything and everything, right? So so we said that let's first get all of that at one place, okay? So that's what mm -hmm. we did. And then we realized that we don't want to be a company which is a money guzzler. We don't want to be a company which is constantly chasing consumers and in the process losing tons of uh, shareholders' money, right? Then we realized that there are already in India almost 80% of the population of this country. Am I audible? Am I, am I there? Uh, it's, it's breaking a little bit. some issue in the network. This is better right now. Okay. So what I we realized... Is that, I can hear you now. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what we realized is that we don't want to uh, lose shareholders' money. We don't... We already believe that almost 80% of the country... Um, uh, mm -hmm. is uh, is somewhere or the other digitally connected and doing some form of transaction, whether you are buying things on Flipkart or you are buying things on Amazon or you are doing payments through your GPay app, <coughs> phone pay app, um, right. or, you are, uh, or you are buying groceries or doing anything. Mm -hmm. We then thought that why not? Why not the platform that we have? is seamlessly integrating on other digital platforms which has access to millions of customers already okay so okay. i'm assuming that you you are already a customer of either an amazon or a flipkart right and you probably shop yeah. on a on a regular basis now you have okay. imagine you have an option to renew your car uh, insurance in less than 60 seconds uh -huh. on the platform of yeah. amazon or flipkart uh, so we have something right. called photo, photo kicho bima lo. So you just go and click a photograph of your uh -huh. number plate, and the system will okay. give you quote in like 15 seconds, and you can buy then and there only. So we pictured that if this functionality is available on mm -hmm. all the digital platforms, then 
the penetration will automatically increase, right? Then people will automatically Absolutely. start using it. And they don't have to go to a particular portal or a, or a shop uh, to buy product. They can buy it anywhere. Mm -hmm. Like the way you go to a super mall and you can buy um, um, uh, Reebok shoes also and a Bata shoe also, right? Uh, you mm -hmm. don't have to go right. to another Bata store and six miles mm -hmm. away to the uh, store. Another store, right. So, exactly. so that gave birth to cover stack and I'm very proud to say that, you know, we, uh, we are already like partnered with, uh, or integrated with about 23, 24, uh, large scaled digital platforms. And our vision is to, through this year, you know, have another 25 odd such digital, uh, uh, partnership where we want the consumer to have the best of the ability to secure yes, I'm and sorry to interrupt, but there is some issue in the internet from your end. I don't know. Okay. Let me, can I, I'll try and change the network then. Yeah, it's again, it's again got reconnected, but there is some issue going on. Okay, sure, so uh, we... I'll, yeah, we can continue. Yeah, I'm it's, just it's to... again. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me clearly, Mrs. I think there is some connection issue from his end. Okay, so yeah, that, that sounds really exciting. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Hello, Mrs. Ha? Yes, yes, I can hear. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, so you were you were saying about how easy and you want yeah, so the you goal, to make the this goal, platform easy uh, and access. Yeah, the goal 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 is really not to uh, um, goal is really to uh, you know uh, be a large organization and sell most insurance that are that are available to be sold, but not necessarily we sell it ourselves. Right. So we will sell it. We will sell it. Right. So we sell it. There are other sellers who are selling different things. So why not insurance? Please sell it on my behalf. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So uh, we have a we have a comment coming from Mr. Abdul Azam. So he's asking that uh, insurance is highly underpenetrated in India, as you mentioned earlier, that particularly in rural areas. So he is asking that how do you plan to make penetration in rural India where digital reach is still increasing? And digital products is much lower. Acceptance is much lower than the urban areas. No, this is a very good question. I'm glad, Abzal, you asked this question. Uh, one of our uh, 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 bouquet of customers is actually microfinance institutions. Uh, so what we do is okay. we integrate with the loan management system. And as you know, in microfinance, they lend to to to, to women in uh, rural mm -hmm. India, and they lend in groups. Uh, they lend uh, in groups of five, ten, fifteen. Uh, and every insure, every loan that they do, it requires to have a, 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 a credit insurance, or it's almost like a term insurance for the period of the loan. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So that's one part. The other part is. For the same set of consumers who are borrowing loan from microfinance companies, they also require health insurance, uh, which are bite-sized okay. products, small-sized products. So we have created a platform wherein we integrate with the microfinance institutions loan management system, which is now which is then used by their loan officers who go in the villages okay. and distribute loans. And at the check of a button, they are actually doing health insurance as well as term insurance uh, for such uh, borrowers. Uh, we are doing in that, uh, uh, but the penetration, uh, well, penetration is there, but the adaptability is slightly uh, uh, low at this point in time. Our view is that uh, over the course of next two years, we should have touched mm -hmm. at least uh, two million uh, women and their families uh, uh, through this uh, uh, line of business of ours. That is that is a very intelligent, actually, like you know, very commendable way. I definitely wish uh, you know all, you all the best about the penetration. Um, so I wanted to ask that there are emerging innovations happening in the insurance industry. Definitely the insurance tech, tech platform which we are talking about. 
So the use of block, there's a use of blockchain, there's use of API, AI as well. So what is the technical advancement CoverStack is using to enhance this insurance experience of the customer? And uh, how does it using cutting edge IT services contribute to InsurTech platform? Sure. So see, we are, we obviously have not adopted to blockchain or we have not yet adopted the way we uh, should adopt with respect to artificial mm -hmm. intelligence. Uh, primarily because one has to understand that we are a distributor simple it's very simple we are not underwriters we are not we are not telling uh, oh shreyasi your age is 25 you need to uh, uh, and this is your social profile this is your financial profile and based on this can you uh, you should buy a health insurance worth 5 lakh rupees and pay we are not doing that that's not our job that right. job is insurance right. our job is to make sure right. the product reaches Shreyasi in uh, wherever she wants. So it's like insurance whenever, wherever and whatever, right? Wherever you yeah. want, you want you can buy insurance whenever you want. You want to buy at two in the night, mm -hmm. uh, five in the morning, um, uh, uh, you are uh, running in the gym, you suddenly remember, oh, my car car insurance karna yeah. hai. Uh, let me go ahead and you know, uh, whatever app you are using at that time, uh, phone, mm -hmm. uh, Facebook, or a LinkedIn or whatever, right? You you go and insure over there. So whenever, wherever, Absolutely. and whatever. So at, as per your choice, you can buy any insurer's products on our platform, and and it you will not feel if you're buying it on Flipkart and you're buying it or mm -hmm. you're actually buying the same engine, right? So we use significant amount of uh, um, you know, processes, and we use significant amount of uh, uh technology uh, uh digital advancement which enables mm -hmm. you to buy seamlessly the way you order food on swiggy right you want to yeah. order a chicken curry roll you know which place and you know what and you know what to buy and you know what to pay and you have done it in 30 seconds so i want to make sure that you are able to do the same for insurance that so is. that's where we are spending most of our effort and energy that uh, That's that's really that's really sounds very easy and accessible. Uh, we have another uh, comment coming in from Mr. Krishnan Dughosh. Uh, he's asking that can we expect more such insurtech products from you in the future, and what's your plan for CoverStack in the next five years? Five years is too far out. Uh, I think with during this next five years, a lot of regulatory changes will happen to make insurance more accessible. Uh, and that will help companies like uh, CoverStack. We consider ourselves as a technology company, uh, while we have our own bridge yeah. called CoverFox. But uh, 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 but uh, uh, five years is too outer. But the broad vision that we have we have we have laid for ourselves as a team, right, is we want to make sure that we are able to uh, uh, make insurance accessible. Buying or not buying is your problem, not my problem, right? Mm -hmm. So accessing of insurance and accessing of claims is digitally available to you in the next five years, anywhere you want. I know, and this is a this will sound cliche, but it is something which is a goal and a mission and a vision. You call, you talk to anybody at the at the company, and even the uh, the receptionist will tell you that yes, the cover stack's vision is this. Uh, this is what we want to do. We want insurance to be available to you wherever and whenever and whatever you want to buy. Right. I think that's what even our generation needs right now. I mean, we, are, we want everything accessible and easy. Uh, we have a question coming in from Mr. Kiran Paul. I'd like to take it up. Um, he's asking that there's a huge chunk of people which is the unorganized labor section of people. And they earn an average of 800 rupees per day. And uh, they make roughly 1500 rupees or 30,000 a month. Uh, why don't we have an affordable health or accident car insurance for this unorganized labor sector where it is most, most needed? And uh, like, how much is it viable commercially or you know, to create an awareness? Is it much of a task, he's asking? And uh, of course, he's also saying that isn't this one of the largest untapped opportunity areas in India today? 
we would like to have your take definitely you mentioned earlier yes, that yes, you sir, want sir. to make insurance accessible and yes uh, yes it's a very, yeah. it's a very good question so um, unless you're saying something i can answer to this yeah i was i want you to answer it i was asking for your yeah. opinion on it <laughs> no no it's a very good question and it's a very uh, 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 important problem to solve okay uh, mm -hmm. uh, and and so there are there are uh, let me just draw a parallel okay uh, in in lending industry uh, right mm -hmm. from rbi to the to the nationalized bank and uh, private banks and then comes the nbfcs and then you know uh, money lenders etc there is something called priority sector lending now what is priority sector lending right. priority sector lending is actually to those customer segment those are organized uh, labor that uh, uh, kiran paul is talking about uh, so there is a there is a mandate there is a there is a defined uh, rule uh, that every financial institution must have a certain percentage of their balance sheet which will go to the priority sector and that is one significant reason why in india you have more than i think 12 or 13 small finance banks which were origin, originally mm -hmm. microfinance companies and a homegrown exactly. bank from kolkata bandhan bank right uh, exactly. which has a very significant large balance sheet they have been able to tap to that or that segment. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe that segment is already insured. They are mandatorily by law required to be insured. But there is nothing called priority sector insurance mandated by the regulator. Therefore, what happens mm -hmm. is all the large insurance companies they try to shy away or they try to not penetrate this uh, area much more deeper. Okay, because there is no requirement, mm -hmm. there is no mandatory requirement, there is no compulsion. Okay. Uh, there is no law which okay. forces them to you know you have to insure this. And mm -hmm. uh, so what happens in priority sector lending? There is obviously uh, cheaper finance available compared to uh, SME financing. Okay. Uh, bank rates, uh, banks uh, give loans. SIDB, for example, give loans to uh, NBFCs, MFIs at a much cheaper rate so that they can actually deploy the loan faster make profit out of that also right. and at the same time right. it is not expensive for the consumer there is nothing called priority sector insurance if that happens this mm -hmm. penetration will rapidly, uh, rapidly grow uh, in a in a in a in a in a in a very different way however let me assure you um, uh, every microfinance loan in this country mm -hmm. has to have a credit life insurance which is nothing but a term insurance the life of of that okay. of that borrower is covered during the tenure of the loan and it's a very good insurance i mean uh, something happens the lender would get money from the insurance mm -hmm. company there is called hospi cash which starts at 5 rupees per day or a 400 rupees even per year and you can get hospitalization up to 30 days a year uh, per, per day you can get covered up to 1000 rupees a day okay that product is not that popular because the uh, uh, loss ratio is quite high over in, in, in that particular product. The moment it mm -hmm. becomes mandatory, then it becomes easier um, for the penetration to happen. Now, to make it mandatory, mm -hmm. somebody has to subsidize it. Somebody has to pay for the losses, right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, how it happens in the lending space, it is a cheaper debt. And that's why any loss you okay. can cover up. Okay. Uh, so I something like has it. to here. Uh, we at CoverStack, we have a separate platform on Hospicash, which we are making okay. live on Flipkart very soon. And at the same time, we are taking that platform and giving it to majority of the digital lenders for people to have, have access to the Hospicash product. Now, selling is again uh, something which needs to happen. Uh, but we are already thinking about say, bytes, etc., etc., etc. Okay. Okay. That's, that's actually something very uh, important and very vital, something you addressed about, uh, you know, why the insurance sector is kind of uh, keeping shy away uh, from the priority sector, which uh, Mr. Kiran Paul has mentioned. We'll take up another comment from Mr. Ronit Ghosh. Uh, so he's asking that, uh, would it mean that your dealings and partnerships would be with the microfinance lenders? and they would be the one introducing your products to the loan available while they are processing the loan. Also, what would be your plan for mass level awareness of the existence of this solution? So first answer is 
very easy answer is yes uh, would it mean that we are we are actually partnering with the mfi so in your calcutta mm. uh, we are partnered with uh, arohan for example uh, arohan is based in okay. uh, salt lake uh, and i'm sure you'd have seen the boards etc uh mm -hmm. so we deal directly with microfinance companies we don't deal with the consumers of microfinance companies because they are not our consumers theoretically um uh, mm -hmm. however we have uh, we we conduct training shops we conduct uh, training workshops we interact with the consumers we help them process their claims digitally or non digitally also uh, so we have an interface with them but we are not the one who are introducing any product it is the we are just a technology platform which is connecting the insurer the microfinance company and the consumer through our unique solution okay uh, that was really actually you very nicely explained about cover stocks and cover stacks to me and the viewers uh now moving apart from there i want to know uh, like more about the entrepreneurship and the leadership style and the the principles and the values you actually you know follow so uh, a little bit about the personal aspect about being an entrepreneur of course so the team is obviously a very big factor when it comes to successful ventures like our stack cover fox uh, what are your strategies for building a strong team see the it's very important to understand you team is effectively human beings right you're dealing with other human exactly. beings who may not uh may not necessarily be you as in they may not be a replica of you or they are people of varied culture you know, they are people who have mm -hmm. come from various uh, value systems and value system comes from family from the school your upbringing your colleges your friends your ecosystem uh, uh and you are also in the process of trying to get the best talent available uh, within the budget that you can afford right uh and not necessarily the best of the talents are the people who have the greatest of the values okay uh so so the the so the main mantra see this is my eighth startup in my entire 25 years career and okay. i'm glad that i have been able to successfully build teams which have continued even after i have uh, sold or quit or, or or and there have been people who have come back uh so for example in carfox uh, a significant part of the team members uh, are, uh, are 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 those people who have worked with me in the past okay so, okay so so the rule is is you have to have a leadership of three big qualities your your leadership must have uh, three things which are inherent to you number one leadership is not a designation it's a it's a it's a attitude it's a it's a personality it's a it's something which which people must look up to you so people sh you should be have a ability to motivate which is by walking the talk okay? you just do talk and right. you walk the talk right and you go through uh, uh, the challenges you take the risk you take the you take the leap of faith you jump on it you 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 then uh, create a uh, environment around that thought process where people would want to achieve that vision and the goal so so most important thing in my uh, head as comes first thing is walk the talk and and don't 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 just run away uh, because it's not a designation it's a it's a big uh, responsibility uh, number 2 is that uh, every member of your team and as i said uh, the hiring or the team selection is not based necessarily on how great cv you have or or what are the how great you are on the paper but can you be a transparent human being when you are organized when you are part, part of a core team can you be a human being which which is not just thinking about self but thinking about the organization okay so so every member of my yeah. team have always been, always been people who who have always thought about the organization first and then self uh, uh and i think largely it also comes from me and my style of operating and third important factor of a modern day leader is you have you are unfortunately a middleman uh, in 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 between your shareholders mm -hmm. in between your consumers in between your employees in between your mm -hmm. industry stakeholders okay so you have to take people along you have to take the ecosystem right. along 
Right. So you mentioned that leadership is not a designation; it's a, it's a style, it's a, it's a way, it's a, like you know the way you uh, walk, the way you face the problems, and it's a broad concept, definitely. And uh, many budding entrepreneurs does not actually understand the concept of leadership. So, uh, like, it, it, can you just briefly mention that what do you think of leadership? Like, apart from being an entrepreneur, what do you think of leadership? Uh, being leading a team or an idea, and uh, like executing it successfully. You have to carry it through. You have to live it. That you have to. Your all the answers are uh, to the question are uh, have to be uh, a right answer. You have to work towards to make it right. Uh, you accept failures. uh and you learn from it and you try to make improvement as i said just now today is not the last day uh so today yeah. is not the last day uh, you might at the end of the day feel like you'll say i am not coming i'm shutting the stop uh, shop and uh, uh i won't do it uh, but then you have to wake up and actually do it <laughs> right right you're leading right I'll you're not running other- Yeah, you cannot run away. You cannot run away. I ha- I would like to take up an a- another comment from one of our viewers, Mr. Shomudeep Mondol. So he's asking that how do you approach risk taking as an entrepreneur? It's a very open uh, question, Shomudeep. Uh, risk actually, I remember uh, working with a, a company or a group called Avishkar Intellicap. I was part of the founding team and. Uh, Uh, and i have seen many large groups also evolving during my career um, uh, when you are small your ability and appetite to take risk is very high as you mm-hmm. grow <laughs> and as the stakes becomes larger the risk appetite becomes uh, uh, smaller and smaller okay uh, so but every risk that you are taking has to have a fallback has to have a uh, mm-hmm. you you work on plan a you and make it successful but that is that is a risk you have taken you will have a reward if, it's, if there is a reward great if there is no reward then uh, you have to figure out another way of reaching the same goal okay and what is your personal style of leadership like uh, do you you know like do you take risks very often or uh, like you know do you do you get angry very often or do you keep your calm even if you're angry inside what is your style of leadership you know i get angry there is there is nothing to hide everybody around me knows but my anger is not uh, personality based is issue based and um, uh, okay. people people who knows me the team who knows me that knows that you know uh, he is not uh, not angry without a cause uh, so there must be some reason mm-hmm. either they prove me wrong or I- I stand, or I stand right. So I can, uh, I can say that you use it as a tool to actually, you know, execute. Yes, yes, yes. Anger is a tool, uh, definitely. There's nothing <laughs> personal, as I said. You know. And <laughs> my leadership style is very simple. I take people along. I mean, um, uh, attempt to do something which you have not done, and uh, take people mm-hmm. along. People, smarter people will always understand, and they will, they will, right. uh, they will see the goal bigger than anything else. Right, right, right. Ah, uh, we have another coming uh, comment coming up from Mr. Saurav Sinha. Ah, uh, he he's asking that uh, there was a very big disruption. Ah, uh, when you took over as the CEO of Cover Fox during COVID nineteen, so ah, uh, Mr. Sinha definitely knows that it was a huge challenge for most entrepreneurs being an entrepreneur himself. So how he is asking that how did you overcome that period and what you think. has been your biggest learning from that period well uh, saurav knows me quite well uh, we have known each other since we were tiny tots uh, okay so see uh, uh, not many people know but i was i became ceo of cover fox on 28th march 2020 uh, just two, <laughs> two days before the lockdown uh and i was uh, supposed to lead a company which had more than 1000 employees uh, and the company was in a bit of a doldrums at that point in time and uh, uh if people follow media they would see that there was a management change there was a shareholding change there was a new guy who came in 
who probably didn't understand anything about insurance. I had not, except for buying life insurance for myself and car insurance or health insurance for myself and my family, I didn't know much about insurance. Uh, uh, and 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 the biggest problem that we had was. Uh, our entire infrastructure uh, was a call center based infrastructure. So people had to literally come to the office, access the CRM, uh, make the calls, make the sales happen, right? Uh, now, there is no office in COVID. There is no one coming to office. How would you make the CRM available? Uh, so so the point that I'm trying to say that, that that was the moment of truth for us. So moment of truth for us was that whether we take the shift forward or we just hand it over back to the set of shareholders who gave the management to me right and said that and mm -hmm. and and i was in a very unique situation because uh, almost 136 people left uh, uh, overnight and most of them were from technology engineering and product team and marketing analytics uh, they all went to our competition ptm uh, so I was left uh, uh, with a company which whose entire tech team disappeared overnight, uh, and uh, uh, people can't come home, uh, come to office and work, and there's no revenue, and I have to pay salaries. Uh, so the first thing that we did was that we got a very quickly a team uh, which uh, uh, which understood that you know we have to quickly move everything to cloud and make the CR available on the phone at the home of the individuals who are part of your uh, uh, employee base uh, it it was it was the first turning point uh, and that gave us a lot of confidence that we can actually uh, not only survive but but build a business model which is very unique and different uh, from this crisis that we are facing so first thing first we were not scared uh, while the situation was very scary uh, uh, if you go back 20th March 2020 and search for search against my name, you will see a lot of media out there. Uh, so, so, so I'm very glad that we put together a team which were which believed that uh, insurance the phone pay me big jayega, call center ki jirut kya hai, hai? Uh, We don't need it. Uh, uh, Meru was a call center. Uh, Ola is not a call center, right? Uh, why do I need a call center to sell insurance to Stacey, right? She can buy insurance wherever, whenever and whatever. So, so that was the, so we took that challenge. We took that catastrophe, okay, uh, where half of your employee base is like down with COVID fever. And then you, second wave to, uh, was much more disastrous because many um, yeah. relatives of my employees died. Um, uh, and we oh were... God. We were we were we were in the midst of the turning around phase and all of that, but uh, mm -hmm. as I said, don't run away. Uh, there is no there is tomorrow. Uh, there is no today doesn't end, and we took each day at a time. And uh, uh, it was a painful uh, period of time, extremely painful for each one of us. But the team uh, stood uh, ahead of the curve, and team proved that mm -hmm. they are bigger than the crisis. And uh, I'm glad that you know we are back to a similar business levels, but uh, completely disruptive and a different uh, business model altogether. Okay, that was that was very inspiring. Actually, coming from so many difficulties and just uh, the moments you have actually, you know, you you should have you you had to take some time to actually sink in and know the company and the employees and everything. At that point, you took the challenge. Definitely, it has, uh, you know, made you a stronger leader and entrepreneur. Okay, we have another comment coming up from Mr. Pranay Pandey. How can artificial intelligence, AI, help the insurance sector in India? It is already uh, being used at, by the insurers. Uh, I'll give, give you um, uh, this company called Echo, uh, which uh, is one mm -hmm. of the leading uh, general insurers in the country today. Uh, they use dynamic pricing. Uh, they use pricing based on your uh, profile and your uh, driving patterns and uh, many other factors that they do. Uh, and that cannot be possible without using artificial intelligence. Uh, it's already happening. Uh, it's happening in health insurance. It's happening in uh, in uh, in in uh, motor insurance. Uh, it uh, will at some point in time happen for life insurance also. Uh, 
Um, I think what is also important is that how do you use data of a particular consumer who is covered by multiple facets, uh, either through general insurance or life insurance or through health insurance, uh, and, ha and how do you use the same data? So I'm sure you uh, would have a health insurance, you would have a life insurance, you would have a car insurance. Uh, but as a distributor of insurance, I don't know what all insurance you have. So can I use my intelligence, my artificial intelligence to tell you that no, no, you are already overspending, you should not overspend or you're underspending, you should be spending like this. Here are the 20 mm -hmm. things that you should do. Uh, that cannot happen until and unless the regulator allows a seamless uh, data uh, transition uh, between the various insurers, uh, like yeah. the, that, that happens in a lending industry. It doesn't happen in insurance. Uh, more so very recently, uh, the IIB was attacked by a virus. So <laughs> a lot of <laughs> disruption happened for a week. Uh, IIB is um, information index or something like that, uh, insurance index bureau or something like that. Okay. okay. I'll pick up another comment. Um, Shoja Nashkar, how do you adapt to changes in the market or industry? It's a constant phenomenon, no, Sorja. Um, you have to constantly change to the market, otherwise, uh, you would become a BlackBerry phone. <laughs> right, right. I guess Georgia got her answer. Okay, so, uh, you know, as you mentioned that uh, this is your eighth startup in your 25 years of uh, career. Yeah. So you must have, uh, you know, faced a lot of failures. In, in I mean, as because you have seen a lot of success, I can easily assume that you have seen a lot of failures as well. And it's a big learning lesson for all of us. So I want to know that how do you perceive and handle failure as an entrepreneur? Oh, it's disastrous. Whenever there is a failure, it's disastrous. People go through depression and I have been through depression multiple times. I go through depression in one okay. single day several times and come back. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm now used to it. We used That's to the failure. You come back. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's no choice. No, because today is not the last day. You write down today is not the last day, ah. so you'll get out and you will jump up and you will say, Okay, fine, tomorrow I will, you know. I mean, uh, right. let's take example of Mr. Saurabh Ganguly, right? I mean, uh, uh, he was thrown out of mm -hmm. India team for whatever yeah. right, wrong reasons, yeah. but he came back and he proved, right? So he didn't, uh, he played Ranji, he played uh, local cricket, he did everything that, that needed to be done by him. He must have done something wrong as well. It's not mm -hmm. that he was. Uh, he is God's gift to mankind, not like that. Uh, but he's a leader. He's a, one of the fantastic leaders that India has seen. Forget cricket. India has seen, right? Uh, so you have to learn to deal with failure. Uh, many of, uh, two of my startups uh, uh, died. Uh, it's natural death uh, within two years of launch. So what do I do? Uh, uh, there were multiple instances uh, at Cover Fox in the last four years where we have seen uh, failures. Uh, but what do we do? We have to we have to deal with it. It's a constant learning experience. Uh, okay. So basically you learn from your failure. That's what I can yeah. understand. And that's something very precious. Uh, so already you have given a message for the entrepreneurs throughout the session today. That is I'll definitely keep it from uh, this session is a very uh, like golden word. Uh, so we are almost at our first session. I still want to want you to uh, send me send a message for the entrepreneurs and uh, for the budding entrepreneurs who want to you know like uh, like you know pick up their career and start like in start their own startup, start their own industry. And apart from leadership skills networking that is again a big big challenge for budding entrepreneurs so i want you to give some ideas on uh, how new entrepreneurs can build relationships build uh, leadership qualities in themselves and uh, hence become successful as you are today well i'm i don't know if i'm successful or not but yes i'm working towards that um i don't have any um, specific or particular message Tracy, for uh, for budding entrepreneur, but most important thing that you know, um, uh, 
that is important uh, is to do a soul search before is see it's very glamorous okay it's very glamorous somebody listening to me and somebody maybe listening to even you know uh, mukesh ambani very glamorous from outside which it looks great awesome you know uh, anything you do good uh, will be in the media you don't do good and it will be in the media right so from outside it looks very glamorous but very important to do a soul searching for yourself you should know what you are getting into aapka number sabse last mein aata hai as a leader as an entrepreneur you are not the person who is who in when it comes to doing work when it comes to walking the talk when it comes to sacrifices when it comes to everything that a human being must not have as a leader you have to do first theek hai but when it comes to rewards you have to be the last okay if you understand this golden rule and that is a soul searching is important am i willing to do the sacrifice am i will i if i don't have money to pay rent or or any essential will i be able to find an answer to that or rather run away from it and get into a job i have seen many people ab nahi hoga 2 saal ho gaya now i am gone back to my bank work and i am happy doing my 9 to 5 job uh, if that that soul search you cannot give in you cannot give up <laughs> whether you are selling a small tea in a tea shop you you are an entrepreneur you cannot give up mm-hmm. so so that if you don't have that answer don't get into it uh-huh. because it's painful it's it's non rewarding it's it's uh, it's uh, very dangerous from a health perspective uh, mm-hmm. and uh, sometimes non fulfilling okay i might scare people but this is the truth no i believe uh, those who are determined will not be scared rather they'll take it as a lesson and they'll do their soul searching and they'll prepare themselves to you know face the problems and the challenges which are to be coming up okay so uh, thank you so much mr jack you know thank you enough actually it has been such an insightful session for me for everybody who was listening to us and again i want to congratulate you for completing 10 years in cover for and uh, wish you a lot of success wish you a lot of success for uh, cover stack the insurance tech platform and i really really wish that everybody insurance which is such an like it's an inevitable part today in our life and i wish everybody gets access and uh, easy access again which you are aiming to uh, everybody gets an easy access and it's it's it gets as easy as buying groceries on blinkit or uh, you know putting an order on flipkart or amazon okay thank you so much have a very nice day ahead and uh, uh like thank you again for all the like beautiful words you have said all the beautiful uh, lessons which you have actually shared with us thank you so much no i am glad that you invited me i am glad uh, uh, that i have become i been part of this and i'm very happy that i could talk a little bit about cover fox uh, uh, i while company has completed 10 years i am for me it's a new company since the time i took over uh, so it's been 4 years mm-hmm. been a, a okay. great ride um, and i wish uh, brainium all the success in future uh, saurav is a very so dear much. friend so wish him all the best and his team uh, i hope one day i am able to be in your office and meet you guys he has asked me several times definitely but, Definitely, <laughs> definitely. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. So, guys, uh, that was Mr. Santosh Jha, uh, CEO and ED of Cover Fox and Cover Stack. It was lovely uh, chatting with him, and uh, so many uh, like experiences he shared with us, and so much of insight into the insurance like industry we got today. Uh, so that's it for our side today. I hope we answered the central questions for today, and catch you next time. In the meantime, if you want to get in touch with Premium Information Technologies, please don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms. And if you want to drop a mail, then drop us at sales at the rate premiuminfotech dot com. If you want to join us 
on team in Brainium Information Technology, please drop your CV at hr at the rate Brainium Information Technology. Bye.